When you realize oneness with the Spirit, it's as though you're a member of a great body. And the Spirit is the mind that controls even the most subtle of movements. Your movement becomes His movement. Your intent dissolves in God's will. Your presence and His presence become indistinguishable from one another. Indeed, you are joined with the Lord. And in that union, you find the beginning of true prayer. You don't pray to connect with God. You pray from connection with God. If you believe the Holy Spirit lives in you, type in the comments, already connected. Put those two simple words, already connected. From your connection with God comes the desire to pray. In fact, both the desire to pray and the power to pray come from the Holy Spirit within you. All spiritual desires come from the Holy Spirit. Your desire to be like the Lord your desire to grow in patience, your desire to overcome sin, your desire to know the word, your desire to pray, your desire to be united with Christ. All of your godly desires come from the Holy Spirit within you. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. The Holy Spirit has desires and intentions. To pray in the Spirit is to agree in attitude and action with the Holy Spirit's desires. To pray in the Spirit is to declare what the Holy Spirit is declaring while sincerely wanting what the Holy Spirit wants. True prayer in its purest form is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit's desire in us. The Holy Spirit desires His desires through us, in us, and for us. He desires on our behalf. This is not the forcing of His will upon us, for we must still choose to act upon His desiring through us. This is why I love the way David the psalmist prayed, Incline my heart unto thy testimonies, and not to covetousness. That's Psalm chapter 119, verse 36. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you. That's Psalm 51, 12. Bend me to your will, Lord. Incline my heart to your testimonies. Make me willing to obey you. That's praying in the Spirit. That's praying the Holy Spirit's deepest desire. When you pray in the Spirit, agreeing with His prayers for you, transformation takes place. When you pray, you become an agent of the Holy Spirit's will. Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So, Pray to the Lord. This is what he's telling his disciples. You, pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. That's Matthew 9, 35 to 38. Jesus instructed the disciples to pray for God to send workers into the ministry. Jesus told them to pray for more workers precisely because it was God's will to send more workers. Jesus stressed that the harvest of souls was ready. The need was urgent. Pressing his disciples to pray, Jesus set them up to become the answer. At the very beginning of the next chapter of Matthew, the Bible says this, Jesus called his 12 disciples together and gave them authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and illness. Jesus sent out the 12 apostles with these instructions. Don't go to the Gentiles or the Samaritans, but only to the people of Israel, God's lost sheep. Go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, and cast out demons. Give as freely as you have received. That's Matthew 10, 1 and Matthew 10, 5 through 8. Now, notice the sequence there. The disciples prayed for God to send workers, and then they became the workers God sent. The prayers they prayed caused them to become the answer they requested. Prayer is not all about receiving. It's more about becoming. The prayer of the disciples didn't change the situation. It changed them. Caught up in the overlap of heaven and earth, you'll find yourself being transformed 
by your contact with the heavenly dimension. It'll change the substance of who you are, nature and character. For every moment you are praying, you are changing, whether you see the immediate evidence of that or not. That's the power of praying in the Holy Spirit. When you finally begin to live and pray from that place of oneness with God, His presence overtakes all of you. I want to disappear in the bigness of God. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I want to be able to say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Son. Of course, by that I don't mean that I want to make a claim to divinity. I simply mean that I want to be like Jesus. Think, for example, of the wonderful thing that happened to Enoch. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Genesis 5, 22 to 24. Enoch walked in close fellowship with God for so long that he simply was not. That's what I desire. I want to be a was not too. I simply want to become an empty space for God to fill, a void on the earth in which heaven can exist. I want to be a tear in the fabric of this reality through which heaven can invade. I want to become a portal through which the glory can touch the natural, transforming all around me, conforming my surroundings to the will of the Spirit. Like Moses, I want to disappear into the cloud as I ascend to higher realms. Then Moses disappeared into the cloud as he climbed higher up the mountain. He remained on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. Exodus 24, 18. That desire for oneness with God is not just my desire, and it's not just the desire of every sincere Bible-believing follower of Christ. It's the desire of the Lord himself. Yes, he desires to be one with you. In fact, it's his prayer for you. I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us, so that the world will believe you sent me. That's John 17, 20 to 21. Truly, you are counted among all who will ever believe. This is not a new age belief. This is not unorthodox theology. Those are the very words of Jesus himself. Oneness with God is obedience toward God. Oneness with God is submission to the will of God. Oneness with God is the wearing of Christ-like character. Oneness with God is holiness. Oneness with God is surrender to the Holy Spirit. Oneness with God is what Jesus prayed for you, what he died to give to you. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. Oneness with God is not something on hold. It's not a joy only to be known later in heaven. It's not some reality put off for the distant future. You don't have to wait. It's yours here and now. Be certain of this, you can have it. For Jesus said that our oneness with him would be a sign to the unbelieving world so that the world will believe you sent me. That's what he said. Now, how could your oneness with God possibly be assigned to an unbelieving world if you couldn't acquire it while you're here on the earth with them? Let the matter be settled. Oneness with your creator is for here and now, for every moment. When you learn to pray from that position of unity with God, from that divine connection within, everything changes. Then you are truly praying in the Holy Spirit. If this helped you, make sure to leave a like. And let's make sure to stay connected. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell when you do. Remember, these videos are made possible by the selflessness and generosity of Jesus-loving people just like you. Become a monthly supporter of this ministry today by going to davidhernandezministries.com partner. Your monthly giving helps us to continue and expand the ministry work. Thank you, and remember, nothing is impossible with God.